You ready? I think so. All right. Well, hello, everybody. Hope you are doing well. Hope life is treating you great. Um, quickly, um, our last second sponsor that came in at the last minute, Dave. Yes. Um, is Dunlop Picks. Um, this particular picks, pick, 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 is a Tortex made in the U.S. of A., they tell me. Um, a .60 millimeter, so and, Dunlop uh, picks, everyone. It very heavily used. The uh, yeah, logo and everything is kind of worn barely off. Barely so. read it, yeah. so that's our that's sign. our sponsor for the day, is Dunlop <laughs> picks. So go out and get yourself some Dunlop. Spend all your savings on Dunlop picks today. I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of Dunlop. You can get like a dozen of them for pretty cheap. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how many how many picks could you get if you spent all of your savings? You know, <laughs> honestly, you could Why probably would you do drown that? yourself in picks, and that would be a total waste, yeah. total waste of so many different things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, before we, I have one more thing that I want to I want to say. We had some comments um, on our last video. Um, probably the most comments of any video we've had so far. Yeah, probably, and probably the least coherent. I don't. I'm not being mean. Yeah. I, there's no, there's really no, I think, polite way to say it. It was it hard was to difficult. follow. It was difficult to decipher a lot of the comments, yeah. but I think our favorite. Yeah, one of the comments ended with, and I don't really understand the phrase, but I'm going to use it until the day I die. Yeah. It said, you badly wrong, Wong. Yeah. And so anytime I think Dave is wrong about something, I'm going to tell him, you badly wrong, Wong. And I don't know what that and means. I will do my best to reciprocate. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> Keep the comments coming, nonetheless, not trying to tell you to stop coming. Right. It was nobody we knew, so I don't know. Could have been just a bot or something, but I, anyway, I just want you all to be aware of the phrase, you badly wrong Wong. Um, I don't know if the guy's name is Wong, and he was just trying to say that we're badly wrong. I almost, the first time I, I read it, I almost thought he was trying to be, you're badly wrong wrong, like just do the oh, double, so wrong double wrong and wrong? misspell ah, it. I, I'm almost, that's good. I that's, like I'm that. not sure. But yeah, the you badly wrong Wong, that's, it's pretty priceless. Yeah, so. I like it. So that's free for you today. So okay, I've got a, a goofy scenario, one that Dave will will immediately and easily answer. It's in his wheelhouse. Oh boy. It is, um, he's going to be maybe even offended that I asked the question, but <laughs> others out there may have a different I'm not, opinion. I'm not easily is. offended. So no, that's... no, yeah. So Dave, Batman or Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Good <laughs> Lord. What did Good I tell you? I told you That's he was going to be offended. <laughs> <laughs> I asked it just because I knew he would be upset by the fact that I even asked. Batman is just a billionaire who can't move on from his parents. Just dad. a guy, he's right? Just, he's, a, he's, a, he's a rich crybaby is all he is who beats uh, people up to cope with his yeah, sadness. Yeah, I knew Dave would have a very strong reaction to that. I as well would clearly pick Spider-Man. Yeah got superhuman strength yes he's got he has genuine he has genuine superpowers but he is also very smart yeah like yeah. he the so, web shooters he built he, he built made that those, right? he made that yeah. that is his brain so creating that into in order to yeah. kind of accompany his his existing yeah powers, i so. knew i knew it wasn't going to be the best question but i, <laughs> I also knew his reaction <laughs> right off the start so i just went for it for that so um <clears throat> okay so we're going to continue on with our serious question which we if you saw last week um you know that <clears throat> it's not necessarily a question that has come in it's we're, we've sprung boarded springboarded We've, we've vaulted off of a question um, about inconsistencies Leap, or leapfrog. apparent leapfrog yeah. or apparent contradictions in the Bible. And so that's the question that I that I wrote down to put on the wall because that's our gimmick. But what about apparent contradictions in the Bible? And so I think today we're <clears throat> we'll touch on a few of those contradictions, but um, we're going to talk more about like in general some approaches to handling contradictions in the Bible. And I'll just say right off the front. Um, we found an, what I think is a great article mm -hmm. um, from a guy named Norman Geisler, um, and it was on the North American Mission Board website, <clears throat> and he had about 15 or so tips about dealing with inconsistencies or errors or contradictions or however you want to put them um, in the Bible. So we're, <clears throat> most if not all of what we're saying, we're giving credit to that, that yeah. article. I feel like I mean, sometimes... We're going to go through almost point by point <clears throat> that article. Yeah, I feel like sometimes we're just... 
we just Google stuff for you. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That we're... And then put it in a hopefully entertaining Yeah, that's form. the only thing yeah, we're bringing that's... is our, our, we're oozing charm from every pore, every pore of our body. Yeah. Um, and so that's all we're bringing to the table. Um, when, we say, when we say it's wisdom, it's quite often someone else's wisdom. It's somebody else's, yes. yes. But that's okay. Hey, wisdom is wisdom, even if we're just, just you know, redistributing it, right? Yeah, regurgitating. Yeah. Regurgitating other people's wisdom. However, however you want to say yeah. it. So, again, it was a North American mission board. We might even, in the in the um, description of the, we might even be able Put a to link. link. Yeah, probably. Um, to the to that, and so some of you will quit watching now, and you'll just wait for that. But <laughs> that's okay. I've rightfully uh, so. <laughs> under, I mean, <laughs> understand. Um, so we're just going to kind of go through some of that. And so one of their first points was um, assuming the unexplained is unexplainable, and kind of saying, "Don't do that." Just because something is unexplained does not mean that there is not an explanation for it. Right. And and hopefully you've got enough humility about yourself to understand that. Um, you don't know everything and you don't understand everything and that's okay, but don't, Jen, the, the problem with that is just assuming that maybe because you don't understand it off the start that there is no explanation. That's just yeah. not, that's just not the case. Um, and I've tried to tell that with, when I used to work with the youth and, and even the, um, preaching now, um, <clears throat> there, I, I, I've run across those situations where it's like, man, that seems like I can't explain that, or that doesn't seem like that has an explanation. And then later on through some study, some research, or talking to people, it's like, oh, no, actually, there's a really good, pretty yeah. simple at times explanation. I mean, even like, you know, last week, our thing about genealogies of Jesus, like, yeah. oh, well, there's different <laughs> genealogies, it must be wrong, but it turns out there's actually like at least three that we gave you. At least yeah. three possible explanations for that, and and more. There's even more, you know, possible explanations for why those genealogies are different. So just because it's not explained, like you said, don't assume that it's unexplainable. Yeah, and people have done that, and and <clears throat> like even archaeology has come along, mm. and sometimes people the the example they gave um, was about the Hittite people, and and often critics for a long time believe they were just fictional people. Um, and use that as kind of ammunition against the Bible. See, it's not real. I'm not even talking about real people. And then later on, you know, through archaeology and things, there's <clears throat> there was a Hittite National Library that was found in Turkey. You know, <laughs> and so for a while that was unexplained, the the Hittite people. But people made the mistake of assuming that there wasn't an, an explanation. So I think that's a good thing to remember. Um, be willing to go and study and look, um, and don't just automatically assume that that something is there's not a reason. For those things, so I thought that was good. You want me to do another one? You want to do another one? What do you want? Um, I can I can take the next one. <clears throat> okay. uh, so the next one then, and so basically, the, what these are is how to how to approach when someone gives you a contradict or when someone presents you with a contradiction. These yeah. are kind of like mostly these are don'ts. Yeah, you yeah. Know, mostly these are don'ts. So don't so, don't assume the Bible is guilty of error unless proven innocent. So this is kind of the whole. It's kind of that reverse of the whole innocent until proven guilty type thing. But yeah. a lot of times, especially skeptics, assume the Bible is in error unless we prove it true. And as, you know, I mean, archaeologists, geologists, sociologists have proven various parts of the Bible true. Like you were talking about the Hittites. That was mm -hmm. one example. Mm -hmm. um, they found some uh, records of the towns Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, it, I, I want to say within the last hundred years or so, yeah. they found records of that of those two towns. Before that, there were basically no records of that, and so most Christians were just like, "Well, God said He would wipe it out entirely, so I'm assuming He did. He even wiped it from the records." But it, it turns out that there was evidence for it, even though it was something that skeptics would hold up as an example of. See, I mean, it can't be true because we don't we don't find any records of this. So yeah, don't you know we, we can't just. If someone presents you with, well, there's no evidence of this, and it's like, well, I mean, maybe they just haven't found it yet, because some of the events of the Bible took place thousands of years ago. Yeah. Some some detectives have trouble finding evidence of things that happened yesterday. Yeah. You know, so I mean, don't don't just assume guilty unless proven innocent. I mean, that's especially here in America, yeah. it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And it's and it's funny how how. 
we Christians do that sometimes, and I don't really understand it. You yeah, know, like doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense to do that. But anyway, here's another one. Um, <clears throat> I feel like I may have got off on our list, Dave, but I'm going to jump to this one anyway. <laughs> uh, a failure to understand the context, and so this is a big, big issue for a lot of people. Um, they'll read something, not understand what, not understanding what context it was written. Um, and that makes a, a huge difference. Here's a simple like example, um, but like Psalm fourteen one says, "There is no God." Okay, <laughs> that's a problem, right? <laughs> if, you read, if you leave it there with the one verse, right? Um, the Bible says there's no God. Yeah, you got to take it at yeah, that. And you see people do things like that. Yeah, and that's this is an extreme example, but um, the context is the fool has said in his heart. There is no God. <laughs> that's it's a context. Yeah, it's very different. That's the context of that statement. And so that makes a huge difference, um, understanding the context it was written. And listen, that's a lot of work at times to to study and look into the context that the Bible is written. But it makes a huge difference. And it, and it makes a, a difference in the understanding of, of the Scripture. And it's something that's worth the effort to do. Mm. Um, you know, and, and so remember that context matters. Um, look into it, especially if it's something that you're not understanding or something somebody's bringing it to you as a as an error or a contradiction. It could just be that they're not understanding the context that it was written in. So, yeah, hopefully that makes makes some sense. Um, I'm going to do this one too, Dave. I've heard this. Okay. I've been saying this. Um, <clears throat> I've been saying this for we were going through Hebrews at our church, and there are some difficult passages mm. in Hebrews. Um, and their point they make here is interpreting the difficult by the clear. Okay? And so you come to a difficult passage that you don't understand or that maybe some scholars see it this way, some see it that way, and and you're just struggling to understand it. Well, interpret that by the clear passages in Scripture that you do understand. Interpret it by um, the ones that <clears throat> are less maybe controversial or um, because usually with with I don't know about usually, but a lot of times there's one difficult scripture to understand and you think it's confusing or you think there's a contradiction in it. But then you've got 10 other scriptures that make it really clear, whatever that particular issue is about. Interpret that confusing one by the clear verses that you have, the ones that, um, you know, make sense. And the, the biggest example, and I think it's the one that they use, but <clears throat> there are some verses that if you read them by themselves... It would make it look like to be saved, you have to work for it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like if you read that verse by yourself. But in the broader context of the of the scriptures, in the broader context of way more verses and of just Jesus and his work, um, it's pretty clear, I think, and people disagree about this for sure, but it's pretty clear to me that, no, we're saved by by faith in Jesus and being yeah. in Christ. And so that's the kind of idea that, that we're talking about. Interpret those difficult ones by the more clear kind of verses so yeah. yeah um so one that uh one that i really enjoy mostly because it's applicable to science um possible explanation for controvert or for conf- conflicts is confusing our fallible interpretations with god's infallible mm-hmm. revelation um and so the best or simplest i guess explanation for this is that at one point in time uh, the church, I mean Catholic Church, I won't hold that against you, but the Catholic Church used uh, the Bible to say that the earth was the center of the universe. The earth, earth did not move. The sun and the moon and all the other planets revolved around the earth. Um, and some of those, some of the examples of those those verses, First Chronicles sixteen thirty, he has fixed the earth f- firm; it is immovable. Psalms ninety three one, thou hast fixed the earth immovable and firm. Psalms ninety six ten, so just later down the same chapter, he has fixed the earth firm immovable. Psalm one hundred five five or one hundred four five, thou didst. Uh, apparently, I'm in King James. Sorry, didst didst fix is that the earth. It is. That yeah, it didst didst. Okay. Fix the earth on its foundation so it can never be shaken. And finally, Isaiah forty five eighteen, um, who made the earth and fashioned it, and himself fixed it fast. So several verses that if you if you just interpreted it based purely on what you read, you would say, yeah, sure, it makes sense. The earth is fixed. It is immovable. It's in its position. 
And it, and so everything else must revolve around it, right? Well, science pretty clearly tells us that's not the case. And I mean, God created science. He, you know, everything that we measure yeah, is is through yeah. God's resources. So if one, if you know, if our if our observations are in conflict, then what's wrong is our interpretation. Yeah. So our interpretation probably needs to be changed to something more like God has made His plan on the earth, His grace on the earth, His you know. His sovereignty on the earth fixed and immovable. You know, that would make a whole lot more sense, especially in context of things like Psalms and Isaiah, which is mostly prophecy. Yeah. Um, I guess I'll do... Yeah, you do the next one, kind of about the kind human characteristics. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay, forgetting the Bible's human characteristics. So, yeah, people who are... And this was something I, I took, I think, a New Testament course in college, and they were talking about what's the percentage of human influence versus the percentage of God's influence on writing the Bible. And after the full semester, I, I came down to, and along with a lot of other people, the conclusion that it's 100% man and 100% God. Hmm. You know, that's what the Bible is. However, the human characteristic is still going to be seen in there. A lot of Paul's letters are written with a different style then you see the Gospels written. And each Gospel is written with a slightly different style because of that human interpretation. However, Timothy still tells us it is all God-breathed and therefore yeah. useful for And I think by <clears throat> human interpretation, it would be more like... Uh, I don't know if interpretation is, is the right word, but um, the characteristics of that person, like you were saying, their writing style, their... Yeah. Like, uh, you know, Luke was a physician, and so he thought a certain way. Right. And so how he's going to convey those things would be yeah. a certain way. And, and Paul was a Pharisee, mm-hmm. so a lot of times he'll quote Old Testament law in a way that, that can sometimes make it hard to understand. Mm-hmm. And that's because he was an expert in that, you know? And, yeah. and so for him it might have been clear. Maybe even for his audience at that time it was clear because they were mostly churches he helped establish or did establish. Um, but it's, it's not as clear for us. So yeah, forgetting the human characteristics of all this kind of stuff. And I think we'll get to it a little bit later, but also when you're reading the Gospels and you see some sort of apparent conflict, you know, it's because the person who wrote this Gospel chose to focus on a different aspect of then something maybe somebody else than would. maybe someone else would have focused on. Yeah. It doesn't make one wrong and one right they're both right they're just from a different from a different you know either either because the person's character made them focus on different things or again perspective just yeah. how they spun it you know yeah and that jumps into a little bit of the next point that a, something not to do like Dave said these are yes. mostly not don't do these things but assuming a partial report is a false report so if Dave and I were at the same place and we, we saw the same event, and let's say we saw a woman get robbed, mm. and I said, yeah, she got she was robbed. Um, they took her purse, and then they ran off. And Dave's report was, yeah, it was a woman who had blonde hair, and three guys jumped out of a black car and t- stole her purse. Like, both of those reports are true. Right. I didn't give it nearly as much detail, you know, but... Um, a partial report is not a false report. Right. And so you, some of the, especially in like the Gospels, mm-hmm. um, some of these apparent contradictions, it's more just jumping, I, I, again, off of your last point, but this person reported about these parts, this person reported about these parts. Um, you know, and it's it doesn't mean that they're false. It's yeah. just maybe either one's more incomplete or one focused on this detail or that detail or gave more detail than yeah. the other. And, you know, I would like to point out that in his, uh, in his book, Cold Case Christianity, J. Warner Wallace, right? J. Warner, J. Warner, Wallace, Warner yeah. Wallace talks about the fact that, you know, if, if the Gospels were too similar, he would assume they were fabricated. But because the details were slightly different, and he's, he's a cold case detective in California, that's his job. Yeah. You know, but because these assuming the Gospels are eyewitness testimony, the fact that they are slightly different actually lends more credence to them being eyewitness testimony. It makes them more yeah. reliable as yeah, that. Yeah, if Dave and I were trying to write a false gospel, um, 
you would be pretty careful to make our make yeah. our details similar if he was given one report and I was if we were trying to do that and scheming to do that and write a false gospel you would you would you would work really hard to get all those little details um, in sync with each other mm. and so I agree that because that's not the case it to me it lends more credence to the fact that no these are just literal actual reports that people gave they weren't trying to scheme and work together yeah. to give this report and you know, they were just their reports. Um, we jumped into it, but another one of their points later down is assuming divergent accounts are false. Mm-hmm. And again, um, that's that's kind of what we're what we've jumped into as well. Um, that's not necessarily the case. Um, I'll do one another one here, Dave, and then you can jump in a couple more. Okay. Um, one part which I, I hadn't really thought about this, but I think it's something good to remember: mm-hmm. assuming that New Testament citations of the Old Testament Old Testament must be verbatim. And this was something that Paul did a lot. Like I was yeah. saying earlier, he yeah. quoted a lot because he was a Pharisee. He knew the law, but they're not exact. Right? Yeah. Like the, the spirit of whatever the point is, mm-hmm. is there. It's not yeah. changing the meaning. Right. But the quotation is maybe not, you know, yeah. full or exact or verbatim. Yeah. Right? And that's okay. There's it nothing is. wrong with that. And, and yet people will use things like that to say, mm-hmm. oh, see the Bible. And yeah, most of the perfect. time, yeah, most of the time, those dif- those differences are are like saying, you know, um, Johnny went to college or Johnny went to university, right? Right. You know, it's mostly differences like that. They're both the same thing. Johnny went to university is what someone in the UK would probably say. Here in America, we would say he went to college, but they mean exactly the same thing. The spirit, like he said, is still there. Yeah, and um, I think just one more thing. Um, I think. I think I maybe just forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> is what I think. Is what I think just happened. I had it. I was waiting for you to be done blabbing on, and then I forgot what I was gonna say. Story of your life. Story of my life. All right, go ahead. I forgot. So. Okay. Well, I think <laughs> I gone. was gonna say something too, but then you just pushed. No, no. I think what I was gonna say was something along the lines and kind of jokingly, like you know, Paul did not have a smartphone where he could just Google this first yeah. and get the exact wording. You yeah. know. Every, I appreciate, and I sorry, yeah, I, no, go ahead. I appreciate that Before recently I've read a few different places where it says something, and I wish I had the, I wish I had it. I think it was, it's been in Hebrews, I think, but it says, it says the phrase like somewhere in the scripture it says, and I'm yeah. like, I love that. And he was just like, hey, this is in there somewhere. You yeah. Know? He didn't give the exact like quotation. Yeah, that's, that's a very human <laughs> thing to do, right? Absolutely. It's a very yeah. human thing to do. That's what I would do. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in, I think it's the New Testament says, you know. <laughs> right. I think it's Paul, probably. Yeah, know? probably Paul. Probably Paul. Be, I mean, it's, it's, you're going to throw a dart at a dartboard, Paul's going to be what you're <laughs> aiming for. Be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the next one, presuming the Bible approves good. of all it records. And this is, is a good one. A big one. Because, yeah. And that's something that skeptics will, will push back on. Hard. I know for a fact that in uh, in his book The God Delusion, Rich, Richard Dawkins uses the Old Testament, specifically Judges, um, to explain. Well, you Christians say that the Bible is your source of moral authority, but here in Judges, this man allowed his. And I'm sorry, this is going to get a little graphic. This this man, a supposedly man of God, allowed his concubine to be raped to death. And then cut her up into pieces to send to the different tribes of Israel to rem- to tell them of their wickedness. Which is I, a horrible thing. Which is a horrible, that's a horrible story. Yeah. Nowhere, nowhere does it say God approves of anything that happened within that story. Right. Another one is the whole thing with monogamy. You know, sexuality is, in today's culture, it's said to be a very fluid thing. Um, the Bible defines, you know, sex is supposed to be between a married man and married woman woman to each other, right? I, I throw that in there. Um, they, you know, they would push back with, well, a lot of these Old Testament guys, you know, David, he's, he's one of your guys. He's called man after God's own heart. He's one of your favorite figures. He had a ton of wives. Um, Solomon, Solomon's another, another major character. He had a ton of wives. How can you say, how can you, what right do you have? Again, Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God approved of that. And someone, you played a video one time, someone made the point, I think it was Tim Keller? No, not Tim Keller. I don't know, Dave. Anyway, 
someone was talking and, and he made the point that well you'll notice a it doesn't it, it god doesn't approve of it and b you notice that a lot of that actually caused these people problems you know they weren't yeah. necessarily happy it's not good yeah it, they, they, it's not like it's not like there were positive outcomes to these things when they were operating in conflict with what god says yeah. we're supposed how we're supposed to be operating yeah i think it's remember that when you especially when you come across something and you know typically it's in the old testament um, at least ask that question. Okay, this is this seems terrible, but does the, is it saying that God approved of this? Right. That's it, it, we assume that He does for some reason, mm. and that's not a fair assumption. So I think that's a big one. That's a that's yeah. a really big one. Yeah. Um, this we hit on this one a little bit, but forgetting that the Bible is non technical, and it, they use the example of the sun. Um, it's no more unscientific to speak of the sun standing still, like it did in Joshua. Mm-hmm. Then to refer to the sun rising, like even meteorologists still refer to the times of sunrise and sunset, and we know that's not the right. sun doesn't actually right. rise and set. So it's the Bible's not like a scientific, you know, it's, spe- it's speaking common language to common people. That doesn't mean that um, that it's lying yeah. or incorrect. And a lot of the Old Testament specifically is written more in the style of Hebrew poetry than it is. You know, then, yeah, then it is instructional. Yeah, I'll let you and jump so, into that because that's another one on the list. Neglecting to note literary devices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah, it's it, it is it is um, obviously something that's studied a lot by by professionals. But there are parts of the Old Testament that is almost strictly poetic. And then there's parts that are strictly literal, and then there's a part that's a mix, and it doesn't tell you when it's changing, because right. that's just not, not the way they wrote. No warnings. Yeah, there's no warnings. It was just to be understood which part was which part was figurative and which part was literal. It was a very fluid language. Yeah, and they talk in here, there's allegory, there's metaphors, there's similes, there's hyperbole, right. know, poetic figures, figures of speech, satire yeah. even, and so... Just because, for example, like uh, um, hyperbole, that that's a that's a genuine um, literary device that people yeah. would use now and would have used at the time, and that's okay. It's not a mistake, you know, um, for them to use like a figure of speech, um, and that's that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Doesn't mean it's lying, and things like that, and so. Um, I hadn't really looked at this one much, so I, I'm, there's a point on here that says assuming round numbers are false. Mm. Have you looked at this one much? A little bit. So basically, you'll have times when people will quote some sort of number, and it ends up being this even, you know, Jesus fed 5,000. Okay. Right? Yeah. Not 4,962. Okay. They, they round to the nearest hole because, I mean... Obviously, you know they did. They didn't have a, a great way. Of, they didn't have a they clicker where they could just yeah. yeah. yeah and it was go through the turnstiles to kind right, of count. Exactly. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And really it was about that much, it yeah. was genuinely you know most things. Pardon me. Generally, it was generally uh, th- in details like this were conveyed orally purely, so they didn't write it down anywhere. So it would be a whole lot easier to just tell someone Jesus fed five thousand than Jesus fed. 4,962 people, right? Yeah. So I, why would, you know, when you're talking about numbers like that, that's how it, but apparently in some spots there are conflicts where one person will say like 160 mm. and another person will say 150. Yeah. You know, the the people of the time would understand they're the same yeah. even if it is in And conflict. I remember the point I was trying to make earlier. Okay. I don't lose it. Back to um, Almost none of this changes like the foundation of anything yes. that truly matters. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's it's splitting hairs on things like a, a number that maybe if Dave was like, yeah, there's yeah, 300 people there, and I gave the report. Yeah, there's about 280 people there. You yeah. know, like it's it's more things like that. And so that's something else to remember. Don't let it shake your faith yeah. when it's um, – we're, we're talking yeah. about very – almost all very, very minor things. Mm-hmm. Um, that people would say are, are contradictions. Yeah. You're trying to say it's not true. And so, yeah, like that number thing, that goes back to the whole 100% man part of the Bible being influenced is that, you know, yeah. God God moves people to record their observations or their prophecies or their insights, whatever. And so they do, and they do it according to their human intellect and human abilities. And I actually heard you talking about that one earlier, so I'll let you jump into that one. 
Because it's along some of the same lines. Oh, forgetting that only the original text is inerrant. Yes. So I was just talking with Brad about this one, that we as Christians are rightfully taught that that all of Scripture is God-breathed, because again, that is from the Bible. All of it is God-breathed, all of it is perfect, and all of it is inerrant. And I believe wholeheartedly that that is true. I also believe wholeheartedly that our Bibles have errors. They have mistakes. They have insertions. How can I rectify those two things? Tell us, Dave. Tell us, please. (laughs) Easy. The original scripture, which we no longer have access to, was inerrant. It was perfect. It was flawless. What we have was not the original. Even what we have is not even based 100% on the original. It's based on thousands of copies of what was at one point in time the original. Um, But... Throughout the time, there's going to be mistakes. However, keep in mind that through the study, and specifically, this came to, this came to um, scholars' attention during when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay. They discovered a plethora of documents of um, some of the oldest records of like mm-hmm. Isaiah and most of the Old Testament, and they found that our modern day records were. Ninety nine point nine nine percent true, accurate to what yeah to what to what they found of these old old records, um, and most of the differences that did occur were things like the spelling of John J O N versus J O H N. Does that affect our theology in any way, shape, or form? Does that affect our beliefs? No, absolutely and not. Part of the point they make in the article is that none of these type of things affect any teaching at all. Yeah. Like whatsoever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so even if those things are there, um, they're not affecting the, the, the message, the point, the teaching of the Scripture. Yeah, and they're they're extremely minor. Yeah, um, and they they make they they in the article they make a, a point of kind of some of the other differences, and I'll I'll put it even more simply would be like you read one message that says you're a winner, y o u r a winner, and then another message you're you are a winner. It's the same message, right? It's just limited by a different uh, grammar. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, there, there. Uh, let's do this last one. Okay, I think okay. there's maybe a couple, but this will be a good one, maybe to stop on. Um, one of their last points: forgetting that later revelation supersedes earlier ones. And to me, this is. Um, I mean, in some ways, Jesus would be the biz- biggest example of this, of him yeah. kind of like fulfilling the law. You know, and we we read the Old Testament, and there were. Laws set forth, and you need to do this. You need to have these sacrifices, and and then Jesus comes along and says, "I'm the ultimate sacrifice. You don't need to do any of those other mm-hmm. things." And and so forgetting that that changes, um, in some ways, what we have to do, what we need to do, what's right for us to do. Um, this later revelation, in particular, I think about Jesus changes those things. Like I, I'm going to eat some pork now. You know, right. things like that. We're free yeah. to do those things because of later revelation. Yeah, God tells Peter, "Do us. not call unclean what I have made clean." Yeah, yeah. and and people, people, non Christians in particular that don't understand how that kind of works together. The Old Testament pointing towards Jesus and mm-hmm. being a shadow of, of of better things to come. They want to pick out something in the Old Testament and say, "Well." Um, the Bible says you shouldn't do this, and you're still doing that. Right. And, well, that's because we've got this new revelation in, mm-hmm. in Jesus and through Jesus and the person that he is and, and God speaking through, you know, Paul and telling us things like Dave just said, don't call unclean what uh, what I've called clean. There's no so, longer circumcision or uncircumcision. But, right? Yeah. Yeah, those things... Um, I don't know if change is the right word, but complete maybe is a better word. You know, Jesus came along and completed yeah. those things for us. We don't have to follow all those particular sets of rules necessarily that you see in the Old Testament. Um, that's a big difference. That's huge. Um, and that's ammunition people use against Christians to say, well, you don't really believe it because you don't follow this part in the Old Testament. And, they're just not understanding. Well, I get what you're saying, but it's because this part of the New Testament <laughs> says yes, I don't have to do it. that yes. yeah. anymore. And it, it, again, generally is because of Jesus and what he, he's done for us. And so that's that's a big thing to remember. Yeah. New revelation um, in the Word of God um, about Jesus specifically um, supersedes 
those mm-hmm. those things in the Old Testament. So we're going to keep going with this for a little bit. Um, I think we might try to bring some even more specific examples, maybe some of the bigger, harder ones I to mentioned, talk yeah. through. I mentioned last week that one of my favorite <laughs> is the story of you know Jesus's tomb being found empty and the angels because it's a it's found in the story is found in all four gospels, right? And uh, it's different in all four gospels, but also it really does. When you pick it apart, it really does give you such a full picture to actually look at the contra- contradictions, apparent contradictions, and then yeah. put piece it together and go, well, actually, it's not a, it's not contradictions; it's a full story it's a being full, told from four story. different, yeah, yeah, four yeah. different perspectives. So we'll bring on um, some more of those things. Um, I don't know for a week or two, and we'll see. And then we do need more questions, more questions. I think. Um, so so bring some questions on to us. You want to do your. Nerdy question of the day. Nerd, the nerdism. Time? Yeah, I think it's Your nerdism. nerdism. All right. It's, uh... So I, all of you who are into the uh, selfie scene are going to enjoy this one. Um, in 2017, so fairly recently, and I imagine the statistic hasn't changed a whole lot, more deaths were attributed to selfies than shark attacks. Whoa, okay, more deaths. We're attributed to self... This is 2017. 2017. So in, we're talking four years ago at this point. Yes. In, in 2017, um, there were roughly six deaths attributed to shark attacks. Okay. Um, five deaths in 2006. The average is six. The average is six per year. Five deaths in 2017. 35 deaths were caused by taking wow. selfies. People not paying attention to where they were going. They backed Walking off a cliff. Off a cliff into and traffic. And into like traffic, that. stuff like that. And 35, so, yeah, huh? 35 in 2017. <laughs> well, there you go. So, be if you're going out there, kids, be, be safe when you selfie. Be careful out there. <laughs> okay, a couple of, uh, uh, thank you, Dave, a couple of ridiculous jokes. Ridiculous. These are ridiculous. Okay. I had a happy childhood. Dad would roll me down the hill in a tire. Those were good years. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it when Dave says, oh, man. <laughs> okay, finally, I've only got two for you this time. I know you're disappointed, but here's the last one. Um, my friends always get mad at me when I steal their kitchen utensils, but that's a whisk I'm willing to take. <laughs> Did I say that right? That's a whisk I'm willing to take. Yeah. <laughs> I like that one. I don't know that why. Actually, yeah, I don't know why. Bad. It reminds me of You Badly Wrong Wong. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what it is. That's why I like it. So, <laughs> Anyway, thanks. We, get, we appreciate it. Um, keep the questions coming. And I think that's it. I think that's all the damage we can do. Yeah, I don't know. Video. We'll have to see if we can piece something into a five minutes or less. I'm just, not sure if we can, it's but we'll, yeah. Anyway, we might we'll just have to run it through it real quick. And, but. <laughs> hey, we'll do our best. All right, take care. Adios.